Good day, everyone. I'm Mr. Charles Arconado, and today we will rationalize some practice questions designed for those who are planning to take the ASCP exam. This is also applicable for those examinees who are planning to take the International Technologies in Microbiology as well as International Specialist in Microbiology. Please take note that most of the questions that I will present today are adapted from BOC Study Guide 6 edition. So without further ado, let's now start rationalizing some practice questions. Number one, what type of filter does a bicyclic cabinet class 2 use to filter out infectious agents? A. Millipore filters, B. HEPA filters, C. Dust filters, or D. Charcoal filters? The correct answer for number one is letter B, HEPA filter. Again, the answer is letter B for our first practice question. So first of all, let's define what is BSC or Biological Safety Cabinet or simply Biosafety Cabinet. BSC or Biosafety Cabinet is a hood with high-efficiency particulate air or HEPA filters that provides personnel environmental and or product protection when appropriate practices and procedures are followed. Biosafety cabinet is an engineering control as a form of mitigation strategy. Regardless on what type of biosafety cabinet, you can always find HEPA filter. HEPA filter. HEPA is an acronym that stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter. Exhaust system that removes particles equal to or greater than 0 0.3 mi microns, which essentially include all bacteria, spore, and viruses with an efficiency of 99.97%. HEPA filters are effective at trapping particulates. HEPA filter is a form of air filter that filter out those microorganisms with more than 0 0.3 microns in size. Number two, infectious agents can enter the body through which of the following routes? A, inhalation, B, ingestion, C, inoculation, or B, all of the above? The answer for, the, for our second practice question is letter D, all of the above. Next is number three. A patient diagnosed with active tuberculosis is admitted to the hospital. What type of precautions above and beyond standard precautions will this patient be placed on? A. Contact precautions B. Droplet precautions C. Airborne precautions or D. None of the above The correct answer is letter C. Airborne precautions Number four, the risk group classification for infectious agents that can cause human disease but for which effective treatments and preventive measures are available is A, risk group one, B, risk group two, C, risk group three, or D, risk group four. The correct answer is letter B, risk group two. Risk group classifications of infectious agents. So first of all, let's define what is a risk group. When you say risk group, we are pertaining to the ranking a microorganism's ability to cause injury through disease. When you say risk group, we are ranking a microorganism's according to their pathogenicity or their ability to cause injury or disease. We have four risk groups. We have risk group 1, risk group 2, risk group 3, and risk group 4. When you say risk group 1, agents not associated with disease in healthy adult humans. Most of the infectious agents 
which are categorized or ranked as risk group 1 are normal flora or microbiome. Next is risk group 2, agents associated with human disease that is rarely serious and for which preventive or therapeutic interventions are often available. On the other hand, risk group 3 are agents associated with serious or lethal human disease for which preventive or therapeutic interventions may be available. Or in other words, those are the agents with high individual risk but low community risk. And lastly, risk group 4 are agents like it cause serious or lethal human disease for which preventive or therapeutic interventions are not usually available. Or in other words, they possess high individual risk and high community risk. Number five, the steam autoclave method of sterilization A. Uses 15 pounds of pressure for 15 minutes. B. Utilizes dry heat for 20 minutes. C. Produces a maximum temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. D. Requires a source of ethylene oxide. The correct answer is letter A uses 15 pounds of pressure for 15 minutes. Autoclave is considered as the fastest and the simplest method of sterilization. Its application, it applies 15 pounds of pressure for 15 to 20 minutes, 121 degrees Celsius as its temperature. Again, the application of autoclave is 121 degrees Celsius, 15 PSI or pounds per squared inch, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so the correct answer for number 5 is letter A. Number 6. An aspirate of a deep wound was plated on a blood auger plate and incubated aerobically and anaerobically. At 24 hours, there was growth on both plates. This indicates that the organism is A. Non-fermenter. B. Obligate an arrow. C. Arrow or D. Facultative an arrow. The correct answer for number 6 is letter D. Facultative an arrow. What is facultative an arrow? Facultative an arrow is a type of an arrow that grows on the absence of oxygen. And they can also grow in the presence of oxygen. Again, we see facultative and aero, we are pertaining to those organisms that grow well at absence of oxygen, but they grow better in the presence of oxygen. Okay? So number six, the correct answer is letter D. Number seven, which selective medium is used for the isolation? of gram-positive microorganisms. A. Columbia CNA, cholestine nalidisic acid with 5% ship blood. B. Triptychase soy auger with 5% ship blood. C. EMB, eosin methylene blue or the endo auger. Or D. Modified tear martin auger. The correct answer is letter A, Columbia cholestine nalidisic acid auger. Columbia CNA is uh, used for the isolation of gram-positive microorganisms, usually gram-positive cocci. How about letter B? Triptychase soy broth is for brucella. EMB is one of the culture media for enterobacteria. This is also known as the endo auger. And lastly, modified tear martin auger is a selective medium for gram-negative cocci like Neisseria. So the correct answer is letter A. Number eight, which type of microscope would be most useful in examining viruses and the structure of microbial cells? A. Electron microscope. B. Phase contrast microscope. C, dark field microscope, or D, bright field microscope? The correct answer is letter A, 
electron microscope. Electron microscope is the best microscope to use if you want to examine the morphology of the virus. We usually find the electron microscope among research laboratories. Darfield microscope, on the other hand, is used to evaluate spirochetes. Brightfield microscope is uh, the most commonly used microscope to examine bacteria using OIO as its objective. Number eight, letter A. Number nine, which one of the following specimen requests is acceptable? A, fesses submitted for anaerobic culture. B, Foley catheter tip submitted for aerobic culture. C. Rectal swab submitted for direct smear for gonococci. D. Urine for culture of acid fast bacilli. As a medical laboratory scientist and a technologist working in a microbiology section, we should know how to reject and when to accept a specimen. The correct answer for number nine is letter D, urine for culture of acid-fast bacilli. There are acid-fast organisms that can be isolated from urine. Letter A is uh, not acceptable. In other words, letter A is rejected since uh, feces is already exposed to room air. And therefore, it is not acceptable for anaerobic culture. Always remember, only those specimens which are collected via needle aspiration are those specimens that are only acceptable for anaerobic culture. The correct answer for number 9 is letter D. Next is number 10. Which of the following groups of specimens would be acceptable for anaerobic culture? A, vaginal eye secretions, B, ear leg tissue, C, plural fluid, brain abscess, B, urine sputum. The correct answer for number 10 is letter C, plural fluid, brain abscess. I will repeat my statement from our previous uh, rationalization. Again, the, the only specimens which are acceptable for anaerobic culture are those specimens which are obtained via needle aspiration. Okay? Like for example, plural fluid. How do we collect plural fluid? The method of collection for plural fluid is thora synthesis. Okay? And that is uh, obtained or performed with the use of needle and syringe, right? Same as well with brain abscess. So again, the optimal method of collection for specimens acceptable for anaerobic culture are those specimens which are obtained via needle aspiration, like pleural fluid, brain, brain abscess. Number 10, letter C. Number 11, CSF from a febrile 25-year-old man with possible meningitis, is rushed to the laboratory for stat GS and culture. While performing gram stain, the technologist accidentally spills most of the specimen. The smear shows many neutrophils and no microorganisms. Since there is only enough CSF to inoculate one plate, the technologist should use A, letter A, blood auger plate, C, chopped meat glucose, C, chocolate auger plate, or D, fair Martin plate. The correct answer for number 11 is letter C, chocolate auger plate. Chocolate auger plate is an enriched medium. Since most of the microorganisms that cause meningitis are fastidious organisms, we see fastidious organisms were pertaining to those organisms which are hard to grow. Chocolate auger plate would be the best option, option since by using chocolate auger plate, 
we can support even the growth of those pastigas organisms, given that we are we only have limited amount of or volume of the CSF specimen. Okay, so number eleven, letter C. Number twelve, a diabetic foot swab from a from an 80, 82 year old woman with recurrent infection is submitted for culture. The GS reveals many neutrophils, no squamous epithelial cells, many gram negative bacilli, many gram positive cocci in chains. The physician requests that all pathogens be worked up. In addition to the sheep blood and MAC auger plate routinely used for wound cultures, the technologies might also process letter A. CNA auger plate, B, chocolate auger plate, C, XLD auger plate, or D, chopped meat glucose. The correct answer is letter A, CNA auger plate. Number 13, amniotic peritoneal synovial pericardial fluids should be transported to the laboratory within blank minutes. A, 15 minutes. B, 30 minutes. C, 60 minutes. Or B, 20 minutes. The correct answer is letter B, 30 minutes. Always keep in mind, most of the body fluids should be transported to the lab within less than two hours. To be more specific, the, the, recommend, the recommendation would be 30 minutes. Number 13, letter B. Number 14, which of the following would be most appropriate specimen source and primary media battery? A, endocircle, chocolate auger plate, Martin Lewis auger, B, sputum, sheep blood auger plate, Thayer Martin Auger, KV Lake Blood, CCSF, Columbia CNA, McConkey Auger, D. Urine, Sheep Blood Auger Plate, Chocolate Auger, Columbia CNA. The correct answer is letter A, and the cervical specimen, Chocolate Auger Plate, Martin Lewis Auger. Most probably what you're trying to isolate here is your gonococci or Neisseria gonorrhea. Chocolate auger plate would be a, would be a, a best option since Neisseria gonorrhea and the other Neisseria species are fastidious organisms. Martin Lewis auger is one of the selective medium for Neisseria, including Neisseria gonorrhea. Number 14, letter E. Number 15, a gram stain from a swab of a hand would reveal moderate neutrophils, no squamous epithelial cells, moderate gram positive cocci in chains, moderate large gram negative bacilli. Select the appropriate media that will selectively isolate each organism. A. Canamycin, vancomycin, lake blood, tear martin auger. B. Ship blood auger plate, maconkey auger. C. Columbia CNA, chocolate auger, or D. Columbia CNA, maconkey auger. The correct answer is letter D. Columbia CNA, maconkey auger. Columbia CNA is uh, for the recovery of those gram positive cocci, while maconkey auger would be a best option to recover those large gram-negative bacilli. Okay, so number 15, letter D. Number 16, upon review of a sputum GS, the technician notes that the nuclei of all of the neutrophils present in the smear are staining dark blue. The best explanation for this finding is A. The slide was inadequately decolorized with acetone alcohol. B. The sputum smear was prepared too thin. C, the cellular components substained as expected. D, the iodine was omitted from staining procedure. The correct answer is letter A, the slide was inadequately decolorized with acetone alcohol. Letter A. 
Number 17, this is a question about quality control in a microbiology laboratory. When a laboratory can document a satisfactory performance of daily disk diffusion susceptibility QZ, the frequency of performing this activity can be reduced to blank. A, every other week, B, twice a week, C, every week, or D, every month. This practice question is adapted from the Book of Har. The correct answer is letter C, every week. Number 18, a medium that aids in the presumptive identification of organisms based on their appearance on the medium is called A, enriched medium, B, selective medium, C, differential medium, or D, specialized medium. The correct answer is letter C, differential medium. Differential medium is a type of medium that is uh, used to aid in the presumptive identification of microorganisms based on their appearances. Number 19, diagnosis of typhoid fever can be confirmed best by culture of A, stool, B, urine, C, blood, or D, bone marrow. The correct answer is letter B, bone marrow. The sensitivity of blood culture is only 50% to 70%. Stool cultures are positive in less than 50% of patients and urine cultures are positive even less frequent. Bone marrow has a sensitivity of up to 90%. If you can notice, all of the choices are actually acceptable to recover salmonella. However, what is being asked here is the best. What is the best or the most sensitive among all the specimens which are acceptable for the diagnosis of typhoid fever? And that would be bone marrow. So according to our reference book, it has 90% sensitivity among all the specimens. If bone marrow is the most sensitive, urine, on the other hand, is the least sensitive. So number 19, the correct answer is letter D. Number 20, in the carbohydrate utilization test using CTA medium, blank fails to produce acid from glucose, maltose, lactose, and sucrose. It is catalase, oxidase, and binase positive. A, Neisseria gonorrhea. B, Neisseria meningitidis. C, Neisseria lactamica. Letter D, Maraxella catarhalis. The correct answer for number 20 is letter D, Moraxella patarhalis. Failed to produce acid from glucose, maltose, lactose, and sucrose. As we all know, Moraxella catarhalis is an asacarolytic organism. We say asacarolytic, among all the gram-negative cocci, Moraxella is uh, the only gram-negative cocci which cannot or unable to ferment sugars, or carbohydrates. The confirmatory test for gram-negative cocci is what we call as the carbohydrate fermentation test, otherwise known as the carbohydrate utilization test. As I mentioned, this is the confirmatory test in identifying gram-negative cocci. Again, Moraxella catarhalis is asacarolytic. We see as a carolytic, unable to ferment most of the basic sugars or carbohydrates. G for glucose, M for maltose, S for sucrose, L lactose. Gonorrhea, letter G, it can only ferment glucose. On the other hand, meningitis, maltose. Aside from glucose, it can also ferment maltose. Nicer subflava, letter S, sucrose. Though there are some biotypes or biovar of uh, Nicer subflava which cannot ferment sucrose, but still most of its population 
can ferment sucrose. And lastly, Lactamica lactose. Nicer Lactamica is the only species of Nicerea which is able to ferment lactose. Number 21. A 10-year-old female was admitted to the emergency room with two days of severe diarrhea after eating cheeseburger sandwich from a local restaurant. Cultures from three consecutive stool samples contain blood and mucus. Growth on XLD agar has yellow colonies. HE agar grew yellow colonies. MAC agar has light pink to dark pink colonies. And MAC with sorbitol agar grew dark pink and many colorless colonies, which is the most likely organism identified. The correct answer is letter C, E. coli, Escherichia coli. This is a case of food poisoning. E. coli can be a form of food poisoning. E. coli is one of the members of Enterobacteria C, so definitely it will grow in XLD. It is a rapid lactose fermenter, so therefore it will show yellow colonies in XLD. It will also grow in HE agar. Definitely it will grow in McConkey agar since E. coli is a gram-negative bacilli. And uh, by using MAC with sorbitol, it will show dark pink, many colorless colonies. So most likely, um, the identified type of E. coli is the serotype 0157H7, but still requires confirmation by using serotyping, okay? So number 21 letters. Number 22. When processing throat swabs from a group A streptococcus culture, the medium of choice is letter A, sheep blood agar, B, rabbit blood auger, C, human blood auger, or D, horse blood auger? The correct answer for number 22 is letter A, the 5% ship's blood auger plate. 5% ship's blood auger plate is the most ideal type of blood auger plate. Blood auger plate is the medium of choice in identifying species of streptococcus since the observation of hemolysis is very significant in differentiating and identifying its species. Number 22, letter A. This is an example of 5% 5 ship's blood auger plate. Blood auger plate is an enriched general purpose as well as differential medium. By using blood auger plate, we can identify the bacteria according to its hemolytic pattern. These are the three basic types of hemolytic patterns. We have alpha, beta, and the gamma hemolysis. We say alpha hemolysis, we are pertaining to partial or incomplete hemolysis. It appears greenish, okay? Beta hemolysis signifies complete hemolysis. It appears clear or colorless colonies. And lastly, gamma simply means no hemolysis. Number 23. The optimal wound specimen for culture of anaerobic organism should be A. Swab of lesion obtained before administration of antibiotics. B. Swab of lesion obtained after administration of antibiotics. C. Syringe filled with pus obtained before administration of antibiotics. Or D. Syringe filled with pus obtained after administration of antibiotics. The correct answer is letter C. Syringe filled with pus obtained before the administration of antibiotics. Again, what you're trying to recover here is an anaerobic organism. Needle aspiration is the optimal method of collection if you want to recover an aerobic organism. And the best time to collect specimen would be before the administration of antibiotics. Okay, so number 23 letters. 
Number 24, how do you proceed with specimen handling when there is delay in the transport of specimen? A, add fixative solution. B, store at 4 degrees Celsius for no longer than 24 hours. C, store in freezer ASAP or as soon as possible. Or D, add normal saline solution. The correct answer for number 24 is letter B. You need to store the specimen at 4 degrees Celsius as long as it is no longer than 24 hours. Number 24, letter B. Number 25. A 21-year-old patient presents with pharyngitis. A throat swab is collected and submitted for an aerobic culture. This specimen should be A. Set up immediately. B. Rejected as unacceptable. C. Inoculated into Tayo. Or D. Sent to a reference lab. The correct answer for number 25 is letter B. You need to reject the specimen. Why? Because there's something wrong with the method of collection. Again, as I mentioned a while ago, the optimal method of collection for anaerobic culture should be needle aspiration. Only those specimens which are obtained via needle aspiration are those specimens which are acceptable for an aerobic culture. So you need to reject since throat swab is not obtained via needle aspiration. This is already exposed to room air. So most likely you will not recover the anaerobic bacteria that you're trying to identify. So number 25, you need to reject the specimen. Number 26, the GS from the blood culture shows gram-positive toxi in chains. No growth occurs on blood agar plates incubated both aerobically and anaerobically. Additional testing should be done to detect the presence of A. Staphylococcus saprophyticus B. Aerococcus urinae C. Abiotrophia defectiva D. Streptococcus pneumoniae Number 26, the correct answer is C. Abiotrophia defectiva. Abiotrophia defectiva is an example of NVS or nutritionally variant streptococcus, NVS. What are NVS? NVS are gram-positive foxi that requires special growth requirements. Like for example, thiol, vitamin B6 or pyridoxine, okay, um, those are the gram-positive cocci that requires special nutrients. And uh, one of the best examples is Abiotrophia defectiva. Number 26, letters. Number 27, bacteria that thrive in extreme heat are called black. A, thermophiles. B, cyclotrophs. C, mesophiles. D, cyclophiles. The correct answer is letter A, thermophiles. From the prefix thermo, which means heat. Number 27, letter A. Number 28, viridan streptococci can be differentiated from streptococcus pneumoniae by A, alpha hemolysis, B, morphology, C, catalase reaction, or D, bile solubility. The correct answer for number 28 is letter D, the bile solubility test. Let me share to you guys my mnemonics to those five tests which are helpful to differentiate viridan streptococci from streptococcus pneumoniae. And that is MIBON. Okay, don't forget MIBON. Okay. What is MIBON? This is my mnemonics to those five tests which are helpful to differentiate viridans versus streptococcus pneumoniae. And MIBON stands for Mouse Inoculation Test, 
inulin fermentation test, bile solubility test, optochin disc test, and the Neufeld-Quellang test. Again, we have the mouse inoculation test. The inulin fermentation test, the bile solubility test, optochin disc test, and the Neufeld Quellang test. The mouse inoculation test, inulin fermentation test, bile solubility test, optochin disc test, Neufeld Quellang test. Among the five tests that I mentioned, Optochin disc test is the best. The best to identify streptococcus pneumoniae. Number 28, letter D. Okay, let's uh, proceed with number 29. Which of the following is not a characteristic of enterobacteria C? A. Catalase negative. B, oxidase negative. C, able to reduce nitrate to nitrite. Okay, letter D, all ferment glucose. Letter A. Letter A is the correct answer. Not a characteristic of enterobacteria C. If you can remember, most of the members of the family enterobacteria C are catalase positive. Ex except only with this one member. And uh, what is that member that I am referring to? That is your Shigella dysenteriae. Shigella dysenteriae is the only member that is catalase negative. So I repeat, most of the members of Enterobacteria C are catalase test positive except Shigella dysenteriae. Shigella dysenteriae is the only one, the only member that is catalase test negative. Okay, so number 29, letter A. Number 30, reliable test for distinguishing Staphylococcus aureus from the other Staphylococcus species is A, oxidase, B, coagulase, C, catalase, or D, optogene susceptibility. The correct answer is letter B, coagulase test. Always remember, coagulase test is the most determinant test or the most important test to identify Staphylococcus aureus. Number 30, letter B. Number 31, which of the following will fall within an analytical variable? A, specimen transport. B, preservative to be used. C, test processing. Or D, test results. The correct answer is letter C, test processing. We see analytical phase, we are referring to the actual testing. Okay? Specimen transport, preservative to be used are concerns of pre-analytical phase, while test result is concern of post-analytical phase. Number 31, letter C. Number 32, the optogene Ethyl hydrocoprane hydrochloride disc is used for the identification of A. Haemophilus influenzae. B. Group A beta hemolytic streptococci. C. Streptococcus pneumoniae. Or D. Alpha hemolytic streptococci. The correct answer is letter C. Streptococcus pneumoniae. If you can remember, optogen is part of Mibon. Number 32, letter C. Mibon are the five tests to identify streptococcus pneumoniae. Number 33, in the optogen susceptibility test, if there is a zone of inhibition of 19 to 30 millimeters surrounding the disc following overnight incubation at 37 degrees Celsius, the colony most likely consists of A. Staphylococci, B. Streptococci, C. Pneumococci, or D. Intestinal Bacilli. The correct answer is letter C. 
pneumococci or streptococcus pneumoniae. The zone of inhibition to, to say that the bacteria is sensitive to optogene should be more than 14 millimeter. Again, more than 14 millimeter is the zone of inhibition to say that the bacteria is uh, sensitive to optogene. Streptococcus is uh, best identified using this test. Number 33, letter C. Number 34, which organism will best be identified using the following laboratory tests? Gram stain examination because of its unique morphology. Reverse camp test. Okay, lecithinase test, hemolysis. A, Clostridium perfringens. B, Streptococcus agalactiae. Letter C, Bacillus anthracis. Or D, Propionibacterium acnes. The correct answer is letter A, Clostridium perfringens. Your box car shaped bacillus. GS would be a great help. Why? Because of its unique morphology. Box car shaped bacillus. Reverse camp test positive. Lecithinase producer. Using the egg yolk auger. Hemolysis. It shows double zone hemolysis. Number 34, letter E. Number 35, GS examination from a blood culture bottle shows dark blue spherical organisms in clusters. Growth on sheep blood auger shows small, round, pale yellow colonies. Further tests should include A. Catalyst production and coagulase test. B. Bacitracine susceptibility and serological typing. C. Oxidase and deoxyribonuclease reaction. D. The Vogs for scour and the metal red reactions. The correct answer is letter A, catalase test and coagulase test. Dark blue spherical organisms in cluster. So most likely what you identified is either staphylococcus or micrococcus. Okay? Gram-positive cocci by clusters. So your next test should be catalase test and coagulase test. Catalase test so that uh, we can further identify whether it is staphylococcus or even micrococcus. Coagulase test, okay, as I mentioned a while ago, is the best test to identify staphylococcus aureus. So number 35, letter A. Number 36, after 24 hours, a blood culture from a newborn grows catalase negative gram-positive cocci. The bacterial colonies are small, translucent, and beta-hemolytic on a blood agar plate. Biochemical test results of a pure culture are bacitracine resistant, camp reaction positive, bile esculine not hydrolyzed, 6.5% sodium chloride broth, no growth. Assuming that all controls react properly and reactions are verified, the next step would be to A. Perform a streptococcus group typing. B. Just report the organism as streptococcus pneumoniae. C. Report the organism as staphylococcus aureus. D. Report the organism as staphylococcus epidermidis. Okay, so... Our patient is a newborn. Okay, take note of the age of our patient. Catalase negative, gram positive cocci. So most likely, what you identified is a streptococcus. Okay, catalase negative, gram positive cocci. Okay, bacitracine resistant, camp test positive. Okay, so. Most likely, what you identified is group B streptococcus, which is streptococcus agalactiae. So, if you want to confirm th that is your streptococcus agalactiae, you need to perform Lansfield testing 
Landskill testing is a serological test uh, used to identify streptococcus species. So, you have to perform a streptococcus group typing, specifically the Lansfield testing, okay? So that we can uh, further identify whether that is your streptococcus agalaxiae or group B streptococcus, okay? So number 36, letter A. Okay, so let's just have a quick review on how we identify gram-positive cocci. Always keep in mind, once you identify a gram-positive cocci, your next step should be catalyst test. Why catalyst test? So that we can further differentiate staphylococcus versus streptococcus. If the gram-positive cocci identified is catalyst test positive, most likely, that is your staphylococcus. On the other hand, if it is catalyst negative, that is your streptococcus. Again, the best culture medium, the, the best medium of choice to identify streptococcus species is blood agar plate. Why? Because 5% ship's blood agar plate is uh, the best culture medium to observe hemolysis. Hemolysis is very significant in identifying species of streptococcus. We have this so-called alpha-hemolytic streptococcus, beta-hemolytic streptococcus. If it is alpha-hemolytic, so most likely that is your viridan streptococcus or you identify streptococcus pneumonia. And there are even group D streptococcus, which are alpha-hemolytic, okay? How about your beta-hemolytic streptococcus? We have streptococcus pyogenes, streptococcus agalaxiae, your group C streptococcus. If it is uh, beta-hemolytic, okay? Again, uh, most likely, that is your streptococcus pyogenes or the other beta-hemolytic streptococci like your group B, streptococcus agalaxiae, group C, okay? If it is alpha-hemolytic, streptococcus humaniae or the other alpha-hemolytic streptococci like the viridan streptococcus and some of the group B, okay? Okay, number 37. To isolate Salmonella and Shigella species from other gram-negative enteric bacilli, what medium is used? A. McConkie agar B. Cryptigase soy broth C. Nutrient agar Or D. Silo-slicing desoxycolate XLD agar The correct answer is letter D. The silo-slicing desoxycolate agar Silo-slice in this oxycolate agar is one of the culture media used to identify enterobacteria C. XLD is a selective as well as differential medium used to isolate Salmonella and Shigella species. In XLD, Salmonella show colorless colonies with black centers. On the other hand, Shigella species show colorless colonies without black centers since Shigella species are not H2S or hydrogen sulfide producers. Okay? So number 37, letter D. Number 38, gram-positive focus isolated from a blood culture has the following characteristics. Optochene susceptibility negative, basitracine susceptibility negative, Bile escurine hydrolysis negative, heparate hydrolysis test positive, catalyst test negative. This organism is most likely A. Staphylococcus aureus, B. Streptococcus pneumoniae, C. Streptococcus pyogenes, D. Streptococcus agalaxiae. The correct answer is letter D. Streptococcus agalaxiae. Streptococcus agalaxiae is sodium heparate hydrolysis test positive, okay? So number 38, the correct answer is letter D. 
Number 39, what is considered nutritive media? A. CAN B. Tayo C. Bat and Cup D. Makonki Auger Number 39, the correct answer is letter C. Bat and Cup Our source here is Billis and Scott's Diagnostic Microbiology Book Number 39, letter C 40 a beta-hemolytic streptococci that is bacitrus insensitive, however, it is camp test negative, is A, group B, B, group A, C, beta-hemolytic not group A, B or D, B, beta-hemolytic group B. The correct answer is letter B, group A streptococcus, that is your streptococcus Pyogenes. Okay? Streptococcus pyogenes is a beta hemolytic streptococci. It is the only, okay, I emphasize this one, the only streptococcus species that is bacitrus insensitive. And it is camp test negative. Number 40, letter B. 41. A beta hemolytic streptococci that is this time bacitrus in resistant. And camp test positive is A, group A or B, B, group A, C, group B, or D, beta hemolytic group B. The correct answer is letter C, your group B, and that is your streptococcus agalaxi. Group B, streptococcus, that is your streptococcus agalaxi. It is a beta hemolytic streptococci in the blood agar plate. It is bacitrosin resistant. However, it is a camp positive organism. Number 41, letter C. Number 42, group B beta hemolytic streptococci may be distinguished from other hemolytic streptococci by which of the following procedures? A. Latex antigen typing. B. Growth in 6.5% sodium chloride broth. C. Growth on bile esculin medium. D. Bacitracine susceptibility. The correct answer is letter A. Latex antigen typing or the Lansfield testing. What is being described in letter A is your Lansfield testing. Okay? Because of the unique antigenic characteristics of group B streptococcus compared with the other streptococcus. Okay, so number 42, letter A. You can perform the Lansfield testing for further confirmation. Number 43, streptococcus pneumoniae can be differentiated best from the Virdan's group of streptococci by A, GS, B, the type of hemolysis, C, colonial morphology, D, bile solubility. Okay, so we have a repeated question here. The correct answer is D, bile solubility test. So we already uh, we already rationalized this a while ago. There is a similar test, I mean similar question that we already rationalized a while ago. Number 44, a beta hemolytic catalase positive. Gram positive cocos is coagulase negative by the slide coagulase test. Which of the following is the most appropriate action in identification of this organism? A. Report a coagulase negative Staphylococcus. B. Report a coagulase negative Staphylococcus aureus. C. Reconfirm the hemolytic reaction of, on a fresh 24-hour culture. D. Do a tube coagulase test to confirm the slide test. The correct answer for number 44 is letter D. You have to perform the tube coagulase test. In this particular question, the medical technologist performed only the slide coagulase test. Always keep in mind that slide coagulase test is just a screening test. So if you perform, if you perform the slide coagulase test, you need to perform the tube coagulase test also since this serves as the confirmatory test okay so you perform screening so you do the confirmatory okay 
As simple as that. Number 44, letter D. Number 45, which organism is used for QC of positive result in COVAC method for indole production? A. Haemophilus influenzae, B. Klebsiella pneumoniae, C. Bacteroides fragilis, or D. Escherichia coli. The correct answer is letter D. You can use a stock culture of E. coli as your positive control in indole testing. Number 45, letter D. 46. The most critical distinction between Staphylococcus aureus and the other Staphylococcus is A. Phosphatase reaction B. Dinase production C. Coagulase production D. Hemolysis The correct answer is letter C. Coagulase production I will repeat my statement. Coagulase test is the most de de definitive test to identify Staphylococcus aureus and to differentiate it from the other Staphylococcus species. Letter C, coagulase test. 47, what is not considered a panic value in a micro laboratory? A, positive AFS. B, streptococcus pyogenes in a surgical wound. C, positive blood culture. Or D, negative blood smear for malaria. The correct answer for number 47 is letter D, negative blood smear for malaria. Letter D. 48, which of the following may be used as a positive control organism for bile escaline test? A, Staphylococcus epidermidis. B, Staphylococcus aureus. C, Streptococcus pyogenes. Or D, Enterococcus fecalis. You can use a stock culture of your letter D, Enterococcus fecalis. Bile esculine hydrolysis test is the test to differentiate group D streptococcus from the other streptococcus species. Enterococcus fecalis is a group D streptococcus. So you can use a stock culture of this bacteria as your positive control. Number 48, letter D. 49. EGS of organism on Loeffler agar showed pleomorphic gram-positive bacilli. The organism should be subcultured to A. Blood, B. Chocolate agar plate, C. Mac, or D. Potassium telluride. Pleomorphic gram-positive bacilli. So most likely, you, you recovered Corinebacterium diphtheriae. If you want to subculture Corinebacterium diphtheriae, you can use any culture medium, any culture media which contain uh, potassium telluride. Number 49, letter D. Okay, so here's the list of the selective media that you can use if you want to subculture uh, Corinebacterium diphtheriae. Okay, so you can use the lamb medium or the Loeffler's alkaline methylene blue medium. This is used for the enhancement of its metachromatic granules, what we call as the babes Ernst granules. You can also use the Loeffler serum slant, pie slant, or the pie coagulated egg medium wherein it Produces gray black colonies. You can also possibly use the telluride auger, the modified telluride auger, potassium telluride medium, okay, wherein it produces gray to black colonies. Blood auger plate, clover medium, macleod's medium, Tinsdale medium. You can also use the CT BAP or the cysteine telluride blood auger plate. Again, these are the culture media for Corinebacterium diphtheriae. Okay? Please take note that potassium telluride is an inhibitor. Inhibitor that is present among the culture media of Corinebacterium, okay? which inhibits normal flora. Number 50, organism commonly causes food poisoning by consumption of foods 
containing excessive populations of organisms or preform enterotoxin. A. Salmonella enteritidis. B. Shigella sonate. C. Bacillus cereus. Or D. Escherichia coli. The correct answer is letter C. Bacillus cereus. Bacillus cereus, your fried rice bacillus. It is a form of food poisoning. It causes food poisoning. That is obtained via ingestion of contaminated fried rice. And not just that, also unpasteurized milk. Okay. Uh, we can also possibly acquire bacillus cereus by ingesting contaminated cereals. Number 50, the correct answer is C. So bacillus cereus. Again, its common name is fried rice bacillus. It causes food poisoning or gastroenteritis. Its most common source of infection are contaminated cereals, rice grains, and even unpasteurized milk. Its mode of transmission is via food ingestion or food um, poisoning. It causes food poisoning. Its virulence factors are cholera-like factors. As we all know, it, it produces spore and uh, it also produces exotoxin, which is a cholera-like toxin. Okay? Just like cholera, um, one of the symptoms of the food poisoning, which is caused by this bacteria, is what we call as rice watery stool. Even their vomitus looks like rice watery, okay? Just like cholera. Number 51, the procedure to differentiate Listeria monocytogenes from Corindibacterium species is A, catalase test. B, motility at 25 degrees Celsius or room temperature. C, motility at 35 degrees Celsius. D, gram stain. The correct answer is letter B, motility at 25 degrees Celsius. As we all know, Listeria is a motile bacteria. And uh, its optimum temperature for, for it to demonstrate its motility is room temperature. And that is 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, Listeria is well known to its tumbling motility. The optimum temperature, I repeat, is room temperature. Okay? If you want to demonstrate its characteristic motility, you can use such tests. Hang and drop methods, even SIM. Okay? This is SIM. Okay? In SIM, it shows umbrella-like pattern or umbrella zone of growth. Indication of its motility. 52. Establishing the pathogenicity of a microorganism isolated from a child's throat and identified as Corindibacterium diphtheriae would depend upon A. The morphological appearance as revealed by GS. B. The type of hemolysis on BAP. C. A positive toxigenicity test. D. The appearance of growth on Tinsdale telluride auger. The correct answer is letter A a positive toxigenicity test. To confirm diphtheria, you can perform the LX plate test. And that is the test that is being described in letter C. The, that's what we call the LX plate test. That is the confirmatory test for diphtheria patients. Okay? Number 53, which feature distinguishes erysipelotrix rusiopathy from other clinically significant non-sporeforming, gram-positive, facultatively anaerobic bacilli. A. Tumbling motility. B. Beta hemolysis. C. More pronounced motility at 25 degrees Celsius compared at 37. Letter D. Hydrogen sulfide production. The correct answer is letter D. Hydrogen sulfide production. Always remember, Erysipelotrix is the only, the only gram-positive rod 
that is H2S producer? 53, the correct answer is letter D. Erysipelotrix ruchopathe is a gram-positive non-motile non bacilli. Okay? Gram-positive non-motile bacilli. It is catalase test negative. As I mentioned, this is the only gram-positive rod that is H2S positive. This bacteria is the causative agent of erysipeloid, otherwise known as the diamond skin disease. It is a cutaneous inflammation of the hands or fingers that is acquired usually in animal handling. This is an occupational hazard. Occupational hazard among those occupations or job which involves animal handling, like veterinarians, fish handlers, and even butcher. Okay? In the nutrient gelatin medium, it shows the characteristic growth pattern, test your brush appearance because of its gelatinase enzyme production. In this slide, it shows you the schematic diagram to differentiate gram-positive bacilli. Okay? The first question that you ask yourself, is it spore-forming? Okay? Once you identified a gram-positive rod, okay, under the microscope, you observe. Is it spore-forming? Okay? If your answer is yes, okay, your next question that you ask yourself, is it beta-hemolytic? Is it motile? On the other hand, if your answer is no, your next question should be, is it branching? Okay. So those are significant questions, which are very important once you identify a gram-positive bacilli. Okay? Number 54, Listeria can be confused with some streptococci because of its hemolysis and because it is A, non-motile, B, catalase negative, C, oxidase positive, D, esculine positive. The correct answer is letter D, the bile esculine test positive. Listeria monocytogenes is bile esculine hydrolysis test positive, which is similar to some streptococcus, specifically the group D streptococcus. 54, letter D. 55, which sample of sputum or bronchial aspirate is most suitable for bacteriologic study? A. Sodium chloride-induced sputum. B. Mouthwash-induced secretion. C. Nasopharyngeal washes. D. The BAL or the bronchoalveolar lavage? The correct answer is letter D, bronchoalveolar lavage. 56. An aspirate of a deep wound was plated on blood agar plates aerobically and anaerobically. At 24 hours, there was growth on anaerobic plate only. The next step in the evaluation of this culture is to a. Pre-incubate for an another 24 hours. B. You begin the organism identification. C. Issue the final report. D. You set up a Kirby Bauer sensitivity. Okay, so nothing wrong. Okay, nothing wrong with the procedure. Okay, so you begin the organism identification. Okay? Since... Uh, no mistake, okay? Everything is fine based on the question. So you have to begin the organism identification, okay? So number 56, letter B. Number 57, select the type of bacteria that can use oxygen as terminal electron acceptor in respiration. A, aerobic. B, acid fast. C, facultative. D, anaerobic. The correct answer is letter A, aerobic. 57, letter A. 58. Acceptable specimens for culture of anaerobic bacteria that causes disease include A, abscesses, B, gingival swabs, C, skin swabs, D, 
the vaginal swabs? The correct answer is letter A, abscesses or large accumulation of pus cells. Abscesses are obtained or collected by using needle aspiration. So therefore, this is acceptable, acceptable for an aerobic culture. 58 letter E. 59. Which of the following is a correct statement about the use of tachometer? A. It is used for calibrating the centripetal force of the centrifuge. B. It measures the speed of the centrifuge in RPM. C. It computes the centrifugal force of the centrifuge. D. It measures the speed of a centrifuge in terms of RPS. Number 59, letter B. It measures the speed of the centrifuge in RPM or revolutions per minute. Tachometer is an instrument used to speed to measure the speed of the centrifuge by using the unit RPM or revolutions per minute. Tachometer is used as a form of preventive check or preventive maintenance of centrifuge. 59, letter B. 60, what is the causative agent of botulism? A, highly motile. B, non-sporeforming. C, clostridium perfringens. Or D, an exotoxin producer. As we all know, the causative agent of botulism is clostridium botulinum. Which of the following choices best describes Clostridium botulinum? The correct answer is letter A. It is an exotoxin producer. Number 60, letter D. Okay, so we are now down to our last 10 practice questions. I hope you're having fun. <laughs> Number 61, how will you know if an N95 mask works properly? A. Covers the mouth, B. Covers the nose, C. Snug fit, or D. Wet outside but dry inside. Number 61, letter C. Snug fit. N95 mask is a form of PPE or personal protective equipment worn by us laboratory scientists. Number 61, letter C. It should be snug fit. Number 62, a strict and aerobe that produces terminal spore is A. Clostridium tetani B. Carinibacterium diphtheriae C. Bacillus atrasis D. Propionae bacterium acnes The correct answer is letter A. Clostridium tetani The only clostridium that produces terminal spores because most of the clostridium produce subterminal spore. So this is the only one that produces terminal spore among all the clostridium species. Number 62, letter A. Number 63, what type of organism do not grow well on ordinary growth media and demand special and enriched nutritional environment? A, non-pathogenic. B, fastidious. C, non-fastidious or D, pathogenic. The correct answer is letter B, fastidious organism. Like for example, Neisseria gonorrhea, Haemophilus influenzae. Another example is Streptococcus pneumoniae. And there's a lot more. Okay, 63 letter B. We, we call those organisms as fastidious organisms. Number 63 letter B. 64, an anaerobic spore forming. Non-motile, positive rod, isolated from a foot wound, is most likely. A. Actinomyces israeli. B. Clostridium perfringens. C. Bacillus subtilis. D. Eubacterium lento. The correct answer is letter B. Clostridium perfringens, the agent of gas gangrene. 64, letter B. 65, what bacteria is most susceptible to changes in temperature? A, Neisseria meningitidis, B, Shigella species, C, Yersinia pestis, or D, Helicobacter pylori. 
The correct answer is letter A, Neisseria meningitidis. Neisseria meningitidis, most sensitive to temperature change. Shigella, most sensitive to pH changes. 66, a controlled strain of Clostridium should be used as an anaerobic jar to assure A, that plate media is working. B, that an anaerobic environment is achieved. C, that the jar is filled with a sufficient number of plates. D, that the indicator strip is checked. The correct answer is letter B. As a form of quality control, uh, we use a strain of Clostridium to ensure that the gas pack jar already achieved anaerobiosis. 66, letter B. 67, the primary isolation of Neisseria gonorrhea requires A, anaerobic conditions, B, starch media, C, carbon dioxide, or D, blood agar plate. The correct answer is letter C, carbon dioxide. Neisseria is a well-known capnophile or carbon dioxide-loving bacteria. 67, letter C. Here are the characteristics of Neisseria. Neisseria is a gram-negative diplococci. It appears by pairs, except Neisseria elongata. Neisseria has pili as its adherence factor. It is an obligate aerobe, fastidious organism, as I mentioned a while ago. It is a capnophile. It requires specifically 5 to 10% carbon dioxide in its environment, should be present. Non-motile, most of its species are catalase positive, except, again, Neisseria elongata. Oxidase test positive. Superoxol, catalase test positive. Gembex system is the best transport system for Neisseria specimens. And we also have uh, some pigmented Neisseria species, like Neisseria subflava, and Neisseria flavicens. Okay, we mentioned oxidase test. Oxidase test is also known as your taxo M. It serves as the presumptive or screening test for gram-negative cocci. The reagent used in oxidase test is 1% tetrametylparafeniline, diamine hydrochloride in dimethyl, sorry, 1% tetrametylparafeniline, they amine the hydrochloride. Um, the one that uses the reagent with dimethyl sulfoxide is the modified oxidase test. Okay? Don't be confused with the modified oxidase test. That's a different test. Okay? Uh, the positive result for oxidase test is color purple. Okay? Uh, and here are some examples of oxidase test positive organisms. We have Neisseria, Moraxella, Eremonas, and Pseudomonas. Okay? Uh, we also mentioned that Neisseria is superoxal catalyst test positive. Uh, the reagent used is 30% halogen peroxide. Its positive result is vigorous bubble information. So those are the characteristics of Neisseria. Number 68, the required preventive maintenance of centrifuge is blank. A, check temperature every day. B, check and adjust every three hours. C, check RPM every three years. Or D, check RPM revolutions per minute every six months. The, main, the maintenance check of centrifuges should be every six months or semi-annually. Number 68, letter Check RBM every six months or semi-annually. Letter D. Number 69, assuming the agent isolated from a patient's spinal fluid, or CSF, produces a positive oxidase test, the most likely diagnosis is A, tuberculous meningitis, B, meningococcal meningitis, C, viral meningitis, or D, pneumococcal pneumococcal meningitis. What is our specimen? CSF. 
We performed oxidase test and it was positive. It showed positive result. So most likely what you recovered from the CSF of the patient is Neisseria. Okay? Neisseria meningitis. From the name itself, okay? It causes meningitis. Okay? Your meningo cocal meningitis. Letter B. And for our last number, number 70, so this is already our last practice question. The following results were obtained from a culture of an unknown origin. Gram stain, gram negative diplofoxide, endophenol oxidase positive, glucose positive, maltose negative, sucrose negative. The most likely source of the specimen is A, respiratory tract, B, blood, C, genitourinary tract, B, CSF. Gram-negative diplococci. So most likely, this is Neisseria. Oxidase test positive. So this is Neisseria. Among all the basic sugars, it only ferment glucose. Glucose positive only. Okay, so most likely, this is your gonococcus. Neisseria gonorrhea. And Neisseria gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted disease. Okay? So most likely, we recovered the specimen from genital urinary tract. Number 70, the correct answer is letter C. So again, just to remind everyone, carbohydrate fermentation test is the confirmatory test for gram-negative cocci. I already discussed this a while ago, so no need to explain it again. Okay? Carbohydrate fermentation test is the key. Okay? So here are the characteristics of gram-negative diplococci. They are all oxidase positive. They are all catalase test positive. Uh, they grow on chocolate agar plates since uh, most of them are fastidious organisms. Okay? And here are some of its selective culture media. If you want to recover Neisseria or any gram-negative diplococci, you can use the modified Terry Martin agar, Martin Lewis agar, you can also use the New York City agar, okay? They are coffee bean shape under the microscope, okay? By pairs, they are diplococci, okay? So again, our carbohydrate fermentation test is the, the confirmatory test for gram-negative oxide, okay? We already reached the end of our ASCP microbiology course practice questions. And uh, I hope you learned something in our practice questions. Break a leg on your upcoming examination. Keep safe, keep biosafe. Thank you so much, medical laboratory scientists.